Secretary Mayorkas, thanks for being here. The last time you were here several months ago during the uh, process of the nomination, I asked you about the border wall. You said you were studying that, would study it. I understand the administration called for a study that complete was completed the 21st of March. None of us have seen the results of that study. Though there was a press release that came out of your office saying that they we're now protecting the border communities from the wall uh, at this point. When I was down at the border area, you've been down there as well a couple of times. Thanks for doing that. In Arizona, this is what I saw. Uh, the day that border wall construction stopped, miles and miles of wall with the gates incomplete, this seems to be the status that we're still at. This is nonsensical. As you know, the Border Patrol now has to park a vehicle right there next to that gap because on the other side of this fence is a city of 450,000 people on the, on the Arizona, from the Arizona side into Mexico. So my question to you is, what's the results of the study on the border wall completion? There's $1.4 million that was passed with a bipartisan majority last year that is in the law to be able to complete this. Where is this going? Uh, thank you, Senator. Um, two things, if I may. Number one, um, we have uh, committed uh, to finishing the levy, uh, the levies, as well as addressing uh, the erosion of land under roads adjacent to the wall as two public health imperatives. We have made that decision, and we are studying the very issue that you identify here about how are we going to address, what is the most effective way to address uh, gates and the completion of gates as well as the closing uh, of gaps. That is something that is under review now. So this requires a review to be able to evaluate if you should just hang the gate when the steel is sitting right there, if that should be complete? Uh, the review is indeed underway. What what would be the challenge here? I, 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 I would tell you people at, in my state and myself included, when I went and looked at it, I don't understand what needs a review to be able to evaluate if you just have to be able to close the gate, especially when the law already has set aside those dollars and it's already there. Let me, let me follow up on a couple of things. You'd, you'd given testimony about the notice to appear. We understand there's been 19,000 individuals that have crossed the border this calendar year that were not given a notice to appear. Are you saying that's incorrect? Um, Senator, I'm not aware of that number, but let me, uh, if I may, say that it is our policy to issue a notice to appear to individuals who are permitted entry into the United States to make their claim. Um, uh, ideally, they are issued the notice to appear at the Border Patrol Station. If we are not able to do that, the objective is to issue them a notice to appear at the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Office, right. uh, office to which they are directed. There was a time uh, when we were unable to issue certain notices to appear um, and place those individuals immediately in immigration proceedings. So but our, our understanding our is from being down in Texas, in Arizona, talking to some of the folks on the ground, we have the number of 19,000 individuals have been released in the country without a notice to appear. They're told to go to an ICE office wherever they're going in the country to self-report at the ICE office, basically turn themselves in there at ICE and ask for a notice to appear. Do you know of any that have actually done that? Do you have a number of 19,000 that have been asked to do that? How many have actually done that? Uh, I can get that number to you because we have seen a high rate and I should say, I should say that individuals do not, who do not appear are a priority of ours for apprehension in the service of border security. So I understand those are family units that are coming in, uh, or it's a parent with a child, uh, at least one child at that point, they're told to be able to do that. Are the notice to appears that are being given out right now, do they comply with the previous Supreme Court orders that have been done to be able to make sure that they're consistent and they will stand up under the rule of law? I, I, believe, they, I believe they do, and I will confirm that, Senator. Please do, because we have several Supreme Court rulings recently that have given greater clarity to those NTAs. I want to make sure that we're actually not giving out something that will violate the court in that. Speaking of court, there was a court order that was done from George uh, Tipton about the moratorium. A uh, 100-day moratorium was announced to not deport individuals, even if a court had said they have a final order of removal. Uh, the Biden administration announced that. A federal court in Texas immediately said, no, you can't just do that. In the meantime, since that's occurred, if I'm tracking this numbers correctly, ICE removals have fallen anyway by 50 percent from January to April of this year and by 70 percent from October to April of this year. So I, I want to ask you, are you complying with the federal court order that ruled that you can't just stop? You have to continue to be able to remove people that have a final order of removal. Uh, we, we are complying with the, uh, with the court order. Um, Senator, it was the, the policy was promulgated uh, at the outset that 
that there would be a pause on removals to enable the administration to review the policies. The court did, in fact, enjoin that pause, and the pause was indeed lifted, and um, new guidelines uh, were issued. It's a pretty stark drop in removals, though. It's already happened this year. Uh, I also, uh, the, the policy seems to be for ICE removals and for enforcement priorities that it, it seems to be a pretty high criteria at this point for removal of individuals. And if they're not on the predetermined list to be able to be removed, they have to go get permission in advance to be able to remove someone. ICE informed my staff on April the 8th of this year that enforcement action directed at sex offenders that do not meet the aggregated felony criteria will require pre-approval from the field office director or special agent in charge. So my question is about this. Can you share with us, say, the number of sex offenders that ICE has declined to deport this year because they did not meet that criteria? Um, uh, it is um, uh, my view uh, that individuals who commit uh, sex offenses uh, should be um, apprehended uh, and removed. Why is there a special request to get pre-approval before you actually address that? Um, Senator, allow me to um, explain the process because I have yet to issue my uh, enforcement and removal priorities, and I intend to do so after engaging with the ICE workforce, hearing from our personnel uh, on the front lines, as well as other stakeholders. Well, I, I would tell you there is a real concern about the, the additional hoops that people have to go through, which seems to discourage them, and we see that in the numbers, they 50% drop. Let, let me ask about Title 42, because when I was at the border, uh, that was a major concern of folks on what to do on Title 42. You and I spoke about this last time that you were here, saying that you're going to study it and try to examine what to do on this. There's a significant number of people, in fact, of the 178,000 people that were encountered at the border last month, 111,000, almost 112,000 of them were turned around due to Title 42. The question is, how are you examining what's your criteria for dropping Title 42 and what's your plan? Because if you drop Title 42 at this point, there's 112,000 more people that are actually engaging across the border. Senator, Title 42 uh, is the CDC's public health authority. Correct. It is not a tool of immigration. It is a tool of public health. And therefore, the use of Title 42 will be governed by the CDC's analysis of the public health imperative. But is that the public health imperative in Mexico or in the United States? It is the public health imperative with respect to the protection of the American people. So that would be where they're coming from, from uh, they're coming across the border from Mexico, the health status there. I, I can't speak to the uh, precise uh, analysis that the, that the CDC uh, undertakes, um, and I'd be very I'll pleased to follow up with Please them. do. Mr. Chairman, thank you for the additional time on that. This is a very important issue that we started a couple of months ago that we still have to get clarity on how that's going to be handled because this is a very serious issue of how those individuals that are currently being returned, what happens next.